these fortified Richmond houses almost define Edinburgh. Or at least one of them does. I don't think many tourists are going to be all, Oh my god, let's go to Granton Castle! On that note, however, do you ever just go into a country house and realize that whilst people were mostly living in one-room cottages no bigger than your bedroom, that these people were living in absolute opulence with like a hundred rooms and Anyway, I have a list of around 32 castles, and we're not going to do all of them. I have selected a small selection of particularly interesting castles to discuss. Some will actually visit, some will visit virtually through this magical green screen. So come with me as we visit Edinburgh's other castles. When I was tiny, just yay high, my mother told me about Christorfin Castle, saying, Dear fat, there used to be a castle in Christorfin. And this was like giving Ribena to my little child brain, because I became totally obsessed with it. Where was it? Is there any picture of it? What does it look like? Why is it not here anymore? Well, uh, I now know exactly where uh, Christorfin Castle was. There isn't much of it left. So it all started in 1374, when the Foresters came to Christorfen. Now, we know the castle was built by 1406 because the first Lord Forester died in the castle. Now, don't get too attached to this castle because uh, it doesn't last that long. It all starts in 1420 with the Black Dinner. You've probably heard of Black Dinner. Uh, it was the inspiration of the Red Wedding in Game of Thrones. Basically, there was a clan called Clan Douglas, and they were getting a little bit too powerful for uh, the king's liking. So, the Lord Chancellor, who was sort of taking care of the then child king, invited the 16 year old head of the clan up to Edinburgh Castle for dinner with his younger brother. Now, bear in mind, the king would have been about 10 at the time. Apparently, what happened was he uh, signalled the guards to seize the two brothers by placing a black bull's head in front of them. The kids were taken, put on a shoal trial and brutally executed. Now, this pissed off a lot of people, including Lord Forrester. So, what did Lord Forrester do? Well, he went off with a lot of his buddies off to Crichton Castle to destroy the Lord Chancellor's castle. He did that and came back, but... Then, in 1446, Lord Crichton came over with his own set of troops and levelled the castle. Now, if this was not in medieval Scotland, these people would be considered warlords. There you go. Now, the castle was rebuilt, and in 1572, the castle played a role in the rough wooing. There was a siege at Edinburgh Castle, and Christophan Castle was used to stop any supplies coming to the castle from the west. So this is where fortune started to decline for Christorfin Castle, because in 1650, Oliver Cromwell happened. Now, Christorfin Castle was a base for General Leslie in his of war against Cromwell, but sadly, Cromwell still managed to take Christorfin. And in response for Lord Forrester not being on Cromwell's side, Cromwell decided to basically wreck Christorfin, basically destroying uh, the state's income. So, the Forester state was now in financial difficulty, and this led to quite possibly the most notable event uh, in the story of Christopher Castle, the murder of Lord Forrester. It all started with Lord Forrester's mistress. Her name was Christian Nemo, and Lord Forrester being in financial trouble, well, let's be honest, he took to the drink. So Lord Forrester and Christian Nemo met under the old sycamore tree, which is over that way near the old Ducot. There was an argument and a fight, and at some point, Christian Nemo stabbed Lord Forrester, killing him. She apparently fled to a nearby mill where she was spotted by a miller's son covered in flour who thought she was a ghost. She was very quickly turned into an actual ghost when she was executed for the murder of Lord Forrester, and it's said that her ghost still haunts the old sycamore tree. The castle stopped being inhabited around about 1698, and by 1777 it was in ruins. In 1797 the castle was completely demolished and they found some gold coins. Now I've already made a video about that, you can find out more about it here. So the castle went from this to this 
to this, uh, to this, I guess. And now I can finally say, thanks to a very helpful uh, woman with some stones in her garden, that I have actually seen the final remains of Corsorton Castle. So the day has taken a little bit of an unexpected turn. I came here to do a quick little bit of filming about Corsorton Castle. And the thing about Corsorton Castle is it's gone. There's absolutely nothing left of it. It's now a lot of people's back gardens. You may notice that I am in the back garden because when I came to film here, the person whose garden Corsorton Castle actually is in invited me into their garden very helpfully and pointed out oh, these stones here. These stones are what is left of Corsorton Castle. Little four year old me would be going absolutely bat insane right now. Now, Corsorton Castle isn't the only castle in Edinburgh that is linked to the forces because behind me is Liberton Tower. Now, Liberton Tower is a bit younger than Corsorton Castle and it hasn't actually changed that much uh, from the 1450s. A couple of things have been changed, but largely nothing much has actually been changed. It's a very well-preserved tower. Now, we'll get into the preservation of this tower uh, in time, but I want to just uh, give you a sort of quick overview of Liberton Tower. It was built around 1450, and eventually it came into the possession of the Foresters. But after the Foresters left, it came into the possession of the Lord Provost of Edinburgh. Now, by Cromwell's time, it was likely abandoned, although there is some evidence that it was involved in the Cromwellian Wars, mainly uh, cannonballs left dotted around the castle, so maybe it was pressed back into service. But by the 1990s, it had fallen into ruin. It was used uh, primarily after its residential phase as agricultural storage, which is a bit of a downgrade if you ask me. That was until 1994, at which point it was restored to the condition you see it in today. And the reason why I'm stood out here, not right up to the castle, actually talking about it close up, is very simple. It's because it's actually a private residence now, and you can rent it out for a small fee. I wish I was making this up. You can go and stay in a castle as your holiday digs, you know, not, not too far from the number 31 bus for, uh, for a fee. So if you have money and want to stay in a medieval castle, well, there's your chance. Go at it. was built by the Earls of Lennox, who belonged to the Stuart family, and I do believe that's the same Stuarts that, you know, the Scottish Royals came from. Either way, it played host to the great and good. Mary Queen of Scots visited there, uh, James VI used it as a hunting lodge, and eventually it came into possession of George Herriot, the guy that we now today know as Jinklin Geordie, the guy who funded George Herriot's school. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm not visiting this tower, because it's still there. It's in ruins, but it's still there. The reason is very simple. It's on private land, and I could not organise a visitation to the tower. And I don't want to trespass on private land, because it's out in the country, and people out in the country tend to own shotguns, especially if they are rich enough to have, you know, an old tower on their land, and I don't want to get shot. However, there is actually a couple of things I can say about this is quite interesting. First off, in the 1950s, it was used as part of a rock garden. That is pretty cool when you think about it, using this big historic tower that, uh, you know, played host to Mary Queen of Scots and James the Sixth and all those great and good being turned into a rock garden. It's very off our f Now, by the 1950s, it was used as a rock garden, which is kind of cool and very gothic in a strange sort of way. This big romantic tower now in ruins. Now, overgrown with plants of different things. I don't know if it's a rock garden now, it might not be because it's a registered monument, 
But the 1950s were a completely different time. And sa sadly, I can't go into land to check myself because, as I've said before, I don't want to get shot. But here's a question for you. Do you think Edinburgh Airport had a castle? I'm of course talking about Holyard's Castle. Holyard's Castle is rather interesting because we actually do have pictures of it when it was in relatively good condition. And believe it or not, you can actually visit it yourself relatively easily. Well, when I say relatively easily, I mean you go down Glasgow Road, do a UE on uh, the Newbridge Roundabout, which is hard to navigate. Then you go down this little country lane, down through this sort of winding road. And then you go to this what Free Words location, specifically during winter, because that's when the undergrowth in the forest is low enough that you can actually see sort of the rocks and foundations of the castle. Okay, it might not be as easy to visit as I might have made out before, but hey ho, you can still go visit the site at least. Now, Holyard was first mentioned in the 1570s, but the building that we're talking about today was likely built around the 1630s. It was built by a man called John Skeen, and it looked like this in the 1830s, this in the 1840s, this in the 1910s, and finally, this today. There is still masonry visible today. The problem is, you have to go there in the dead of winter, out in the middle of nowhere, near the airport to go actually see it. So, it might not be worth visiting it. But, you can still see a picture of it here if you want. If, if, that, if that's okay with you. The reason why it's gone today is very simple. Mining subsidence. Now, if this sounds very familiar, the massive Hamilton Palace, which is, well, where the centre of Hamilton is today, was claimed by the exact same phenomena. But on a side note, d does does Edinburgh Airport know about this? Like, th that those mines, you know, went under what is today Edinburgh Airport runway, and it, it would be, you know, a bit of a problem if, like, one of the mines started to cave in, under the runway and a plane landed and sort of, you know, crashed into the hole. Because those planes go pretty, those planes go pretty damn fast and, um, I, I don't want Edward to appear on an episode of Air Crash Disaster or anything like that. P please get back to me, Edward Airport. I, I really think you should probably check this out. But anyway, let's go on to another castle, which, by the way, is a little bit of a mystery. our list it's a bit of wild card because we don't actually know if it actually exists. It appears on Canmore as castle premises possible but we don't really know that much about the castle but here is what we do know. Just over there when they were building these houses here they discovered a linear structure aka a load of rocks in a very artificial looking road. Now they originally thought it would be a Roman fort because there was a Roman road, you know, passing through this area. However, they actually brought on proper archaeologists and they decided that it definitely wasn't Roman. It was probably medieval. And alongside the structure, oh thank you very much, alongside the structure they found a memorial pendant burying the coat of arms of the foresters who lived up at Castorkin Castle, if you remember, to the start of this video. Now, that's all we really know. We know that there was an excavation in 1958. We know that they found some linear structures. We know they found an armorial pendant. And that's all we really know. Now, usually with a lack of information like this, I get a little bit enraptured in the mystery and want to learn even more. Now, uh, I'm afraid this time I didn't really get you know, enraptured. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. Behold my mystery wall. I am 99% sure that this castle is part of a conspiracy by the, by the academic elites and the government to hide the fact that there is a castle in Broom Hall. My mother might have taken down this wall, but I have re put it up. I have taken over my entire living room for this specific wall. You cannot stop the truth.